to your conference. Mute on. Hello and welcome to Tourism Ireland's uh, final webinar educational series with our Irish partners, Heritage and Landscapes. Today's May 2nd. My name is Helen Cole and I'm with Tourism Ireland. I'm the Trade and Online Promotions Executive here in Toronto. So thank you all very much for joining us from across Canada and taking the time to learn a little bit more about Ireland. This is the last in our series of webinars but we will be posting all the recordings on our webpage, discoverireland.com trade, so that you can follow up or send the link to your colleagues if you've missed any of the previous ones. So I'm just going to do a quick little introduction, a little reminder for those that have been part of our webinars before. You're going to be uh, seeing a few similar sides about the access, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what you can expect from today's webinar. So just a reminder about access from Canada for your clients. We have our direct seasonal access from June to September with Air Canada who fly Toronto to Dublin. We have a nice long seasonal access with Air Transit from early April extending all the way through to the end of October and they have their flights from Toronto, Dublin, Toronto, Shannon and also one flight a week from Montreal to Dublin. And then obviously year-round outside of that seasonal access, we have Air Canada and BMI with co-chair partners via London Heathrow, and you can fly into Dublin or Belfast. Just a little reminder about the island of Ireland to give you a visual um, about where everywhere is. We have Dublin, which is the capital of the Republic of Ireland on the east coast. Moving north, we have Belfast, which is the capital of Northern Ireland, Cork in the south, and then Shannon on the west coast. Um, a map of Ireland. Ireland is broken up into four provinces. We have Ulster in the north, Munster in the south, Leinster in the east, and Connacht in the west. So today's webinar is about Ireland's heritage and landscapes. We only have an hour, so there's definitely no way we can get all Ireland's history in, in an hour, but the partners we have will um, give you, you know, a good insight into different areas and aspects of Ireland's heritage. Just to give you um, an overview, Ireland's heritage actually and history dates back as far as 6000 BC. So it's quite a, an old island and been inhabited um, about 4000 years after 6000 BC. And it was inhabited from tribes from southern Europe and it was established um, a Neolithic culture. So within Ireland there's actually a lot of uh, heritage sites and a lot of Neolithic sites that you can visit, um, megalithic passage tombs and different um, uh, heritage sites that date back, you know, back to like 3,200 BC and some of the sites are actually older than Stonehenge in the UK and the pyramids of Giza and Egypt. So Ireland is steeped in history as I'm sure you're all very well, well aware. If you do have, you know, kind of top heritage and culture seeker clients, some of the top sites to visit, I mean there are quite a lot in Ireland so I've had to summarize them down a little bit here, would be Newgrange, which is the picture there you can see at the top. It's um, at the Bruna Boigne Visitor Centre in County Meath. So what you see there is a passage tomb that you can enter, and during the longest day of the year, the solstice in June, uh, a shaft of light actually travels right through the passage tomb. And when you're not there on June 21st, you can uh, reenact, they reenact this as part of the visitor experience. And it's really an amazing magical place and this is one of the sites that are that's older than the um, pyramids of Giza in Egypt. And also um, a really interesting site in North Mayo is the KG Fields and here is actually the most extensive Stone Age monument in the world and that consists of a field of systems, lots of dwelling areas and megalithic tombs and um, they actually extend for thousands of acres across this bog land and they're almost 6,000 years old. So if you ever have clients who are particularly interested in this area, that's definitely one to, um, to check out. Then we have, you know, Viking Dublin. Um, obviously Dublin was invaded by the Vikings and it's quite a Viking city and you even have the Viking Splash Tour, which will give you a really insightful look into Viking Dublin. And there's a wonderful museum called Dublinia as well that's uh, really worth visiting and great for families. We have a place called Dun Agnes which um, is perched spectacularly on the cliff overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. And this is actually the largest of the prehistoric stone forts on the 
castles. We have castles galore in Ireland. Um, lots of them in ruins, some of them in really good condition. Um, the picture there you can see with the couple, that's actually Dunluce Castle up in Northern Ireland. And um, in 1639, the, um, the side of the castle, the kitchen, actually fell into the sea, which wasn't particularly nice for uh, the poor chefs working in that day. Some of the other castles you might have heard of and your clients might be interested in going to is Bunratty Castle, where you can actually have a medieval banquet. It's really good fun. Blarney Castle, of course, where you get to kiss the Blarney Stone and get the gift of the gab. Dublin Castle in Dublin, which um, has a lot of interesting Viking um, heritage and information as well because it was built on a site of an ancient Viking uh, ground. Dunluce Castle, as I mentioned, and then Burr Castle in County Offaly, which for the longest time is actually a centre of science there, and they had the largest telescope for over 70 years. So they've got a lot of science in instruments dating back from the 19th century. So this is the thing about castles in Ireland. You have um, quite a wealth of them. You can stay in some of them, which I'm sure Geraldine from Elegant Ireland will be talking about, and you can visit them. But they're not just, there's so much happening with them now. And I'm sure uh, Claire from Castle Town House will talk to you about the estates as well. You know, we're doing lots of like music at great castles and theatre and farmers markets. So, you know, it's it's very interactive and it's, it's they're fantastic places to visit. Just to talk a little bit about Ireland's landscapes. Um, I'm sure if you're part of the other webinars, you would have. Uh, got a, a great description and a view of what Ireland is like. I mean, it's a real mix of landscapes, and that is something that we really point out to Canadians. I mean, you can travel for an hour in any direction and see about three different landscapes as you go. Beautiful, unspoilt beaches stretching for miles. Obviously, lots of lakes in Ireland as well, and you see a little castle there perched on one in the picture, which is really great for fishing and boating. Beautiful, rolling green hills. You have areas of, you know, unique landscapes like the Burren in the West and Connemara in the West as well. But I think that's enough from me at the moment. Um, I hope I've given you a nice little overview. We could be here for hours going into all the different types of history and heritage that Ireland holds, but we do have three partners with us today live from Ireland. We have Celtic Footsteps, um, Kerry and Kathleen, and this company, they actually specialize in Christian um, spiritual and cultural tours, and one of the, they're one of the few companies in Ireland that do, and they'll be coming up next. And after that, we've got Claire from Castle Town House, who works for the beautiful Palladian House down in County Kildare, and Geraldine from Elegant Ireland, who will talk to you about specialised tours and specialised accommodation bookings within Ireland. So without further ado, we're going to stop my camera. And we're going to get um, Kerry and Kathleen from Celtic Footstep Tours to join us. So, ladies, if you'd like to start your camera, that would be fantastic. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks a million, Helen. I, I hope you can see us now. Perfect. Thanks. Off we go. Um, just to say good morning or good afternoon, as it is here. Uh, my name is Kerry O'Sullivan. And with me today is my partner in Celtic Footstep, uh, Kathleen McDonough. And we both like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for taking the time to listen to what we have to say um, about what we do here in Ireland. Just to give you a little bit of a, a background about the company, um, we're an Irish, a small Irish-owned company. We're based here in Ireland. And we have been planning uh, faith-based tours for adult and youth groups for over 16 years now. Uh, we like to say that our mission is to organize tours that feed the intellect and the soul. They provide memorable experiences and exceed the, the client's expectations. Our tours allow time not just to visit sites, but they also allow time for the special needs of this market, whether it is time for prayer, reflection, or mass. But they also allow time for plenty of what we call crack or Irish fun, um, with plenty of Irish music, language, uh, song, and dance. Um, the tours that we plan happen for 
like lots of different reasons. We plan guided tours and retreats, and it could be a religious pilgrimage, a spiritual tour, uh, all types of faith-based travel retreats. It could be for parish group, youth group, um, senior groups, or educational visits. Um, to date, the majority of our clients have actually traveled from the USA, but this year we have our first group uh, coming from Alberta, Canada, which we're very excited about, and they've also planned to come back again in 2014, which is brilliant. Um, we like to say that I suppose the benefits that you would gain by working with, with us are, well, you, you automatically benefit from our 16 years experience arranging specialist faith-based itineraries in Ireland. Um, we do provide 100% support 24 hours a day. We're in the background um, seven days a week, you know, making sure that everything is going according to, to plan. We, over the years, we've built up a fantastic network and relationship with all the different service providers that we use, and we use very experienced people who are as, as passionate about customer service as we are and as dedicated to our, um, our mission. We provide top-class drivers and guides, and you know these, these people are fundamental to the success of any group coming to the country because they interact every day with the client on a day-to-day -day basis. So we, we handpick them to go, to go with the groups. And we have found that, um, sorry, no, I got a bit distracted there. But um, they're, they're a very important part. And uh, as I said, we, we handpick them to go with, to go with the groups. And, and they are equally passionate about the experience that we want um, our groups to have. Again, thankfully, in Ireland, we, we do have top class accommodation. Um, we, the accommodation here in Ireland is of a very high standard. Uh, but what you do find with groups in the, the faith-based category, that they do not necessarily always want to stay in your four-star or your five-star hotel. Um, they may want to stay in a guest house. They may want um, self-service accommodation. Or they may want to stay in a hostel or even a retreat center. So. Over the years, we've built up a fantastic and a, a really good database of top-class accommodation. We've built up a great relationship with the different um, accommodation uh, suppliers, and so that they know what is expected for by our groups. Uh, we're the only company in Ireland that specialise in faith-based tourism. Uh, as I said, we do provide a really personal service. In actual fact, we try and meet every group that comes to Ireland, and, and the purpose of this is more to get one-to-one -one feedback. There's nothing like talking to somebody face-to-face -face and find out, you know, what were the highlights, you know, what were the things that really made their visit here special. And it means we feed back this information back into the itineraries for groups in the future. Um, we do specialize in customizing itineraries, so the majority of our itineraries are really not ones that are bought off the shelf. They're ones that are planned specifically to meet the needs of a specific group, you know, and include plenty of time, as I said, for prayer, reflection, and mass. Um, in general, my, my partner here, Kathleen, is going to just quickly go through um, a sample tour. But generally, most of our tours will feature a flavor of um, the rich Irish Christian heritage and the history and culture of Ireland. Uh, they will all feature spiritual and cultural experiences. You will visit ancient Celtic and early Christian sacred sites, the hundreds of holy wells that are dotted around the country. You will visit monasteries, sacred places, Croke Patrick. You will take part in um, pilgrimage walks. Um, so they will all have a spiritual and a cultural element. There will be interaction with local people singers, musicians, dancers, folklorists, historians, uh, and the local community. And I suppose the, the one thing that I would say that makes our, our tours very special is the input that we put together from local scholars. Like myself and Kathleen are not historians. We are not archaeologists. We are not priests, nuns. But what we are experts on and very experienced at is 
putting together itineraries and facilitating itineraries that are seamless and work very smoothly, but incorporate input from scholars and experts with a knowledge and passion for Ireland's spirituality and heritage. So over the years, we have built a network around the country of people that if you are specifically interested in Celtic spirituality, we will introduce to uh, experts in that area, for example. Or say, for instance, here is Porikeen Clancy. She lives on the Aran Islands, and it's pictured with uh, Steven Spielberg. Um, not that Steven Spielberg lives on the Aran Islands anymore. He just happened to be with Porikeen. Um, but Porikeen is typical of one of our experts. She's originally from Dublin, but she now lives in, on the Aran Islands. She, her academic background is in history, uh, folklore, and in um, Irish language. She has co-authored and edited a number of books. And she is an expert on St. Patrick and St. Bridget. So she'd be typical of, say, one of the local experts that we would introduce the group to. Um, or it could be a case of spending time with Father Michael Rogers in Glen Lock and, and uh, doing his spiritual journey through Glen Lock. Or we have built a fantastic relationship with the Centre for Celtic Spirituality in Armagh, and we work very closely with them. Or you might want to spend some time with uh, Sister Maureen at Kyle Morabi or Sister Mary in Solis Bregia. Or look at the whole development of the peace process in Northern Ireland and um, incorporate some of the activities from the Curry Media community in Northern Ireland. Um, as I said, Kathleen is going to briefly go through a sample itinerary just to give you an idea of how the itinerary would work and where we would uh, use the input from the local scholars. Hi, everybody. Kathleen here. Uh, this is a sample itinerary in the footsteps of Celtic Saints. Most of our itinerary are all tailor-made. So what we do is when a group inquires whether they're uh, uh, 10 people or 20 people or whatever, we will create the itinerary for them if they want. Five days, seven days, 10 days, whatever. I saw one of the questions there about the ratio between guides and, dry and, and number of people. Now, our, uh, often we're it's, it's in the smaller bracket. Often our groups is usually anything between 15 and 20 people. So we never go into the big scale, and we're never in a huge bus tour situation. You know, it's very, very personalized, very small groups. So um, Helen mentioned in the in the first um, thing there that the Stone Age passage graves at Newgrange. When groups come into Ireland, they normally come into Dublin, or they could come into Shannon, indeed. But this particular one, say we come into Dublin, we'd go to Newgrange. Newgrange is an amazing place. It's about 6,000 years old. It's a World Heritage Site. And uh, it always fascinates people to visit this particular site, uh, being so ancient and so old and so much history and amazing uh, history behind it. Then, uh, well, where we're in this area, well, there are other things like the Hill of Tara, Monster Boys. And, and again, people can do anything from celebrate mass to prayer to whatever they're interested in in these sites. So they're just fantastic sites to visit. So then we would move on. We would come to Dublin. And Dublin has obviously an awful lot to offer, really. And one of the highlights of it would be a place called uh, Trinity College, which ho uh, houses the Book of Kells. So that's always, again, a gallery places like that. We'd also go to St. Patrick's Cathedral. And they, this is the National Cathedral of the Church of Ireland in Ireland. And one of the highlights of that would be the Even Song, where you can, every evening at 5.30, the amazing youth boys choir of the cathedral will perform, and it's just fascinating to watch. Again, we, we introduce a lot of fun into our, our tours as well. And one of the things would be maybe to go to a show, to go off, and you could see shows like River Dance, where, you know, dance and music and that is everywhere in Ireland, really. So we, we, we have fantastic shows. We could even do things like a literary pub crawl of Dublin, which is history, music, and literature led by actors going around to the various pubs in Dublin. So how different can you get really than that? So then often we would move west of Ireland, coming towards Galway and Connemara. And one of the, the on the way there, we would visit Clon, Clon Macnoise. And Clon Macnoise is an early Christian site find, founded by St. Kieran in the 16th, 6th century. 
And again, amazing, you know, the, the, how old these places are, and they are very spiritual places to visit. Then we, we would continue on to Galway that night, and again, there could be something like a dinner cruise on board a lovely boat with some entertainment, so it could be a very nice night in Galway. Or we could stay in, in Connemara. Connemara is, if you're not familiar with it, it's on the west of Ireland in Galway, and it's, a, it's really a fantastic, beautiful scenic, scenic place. So we're just going through Connemara itself is, is a pleasure. You arrive into a place called Kylemore Abbey. Kylemore Abbey was, is the home of the Benedictine nuns, and it was a school for um, girls. It's a boarding school for girls from all over the world. It is now a visitor attraction, so a lot of visitors come to it, but there is still, uh, the nuns still live there. A certain amount of nuns is still their home, and they live there. And one of the advantages and the privileges we have, as Kerry mentioned before, is meeting those fantastic scholars and people from the different areas. And here we would be very, very honoured and very privileged that we can meet one of the nuns in Kylemore. And indeed, we can go into their private uh, private part of, of Kylemore. And um, if there's a priest with a the group, they could celebrate Mass here and join by the nuns there. So this is just something you can't really buy off the street, really. Again, we are very honoured uh, to have the uh, Aran Islands on our doorstep here in the west of Ireland. The Aran Islands are a cluster of, uh, of three islands off the west coast of Ireland in Galway Bay. And they are just amazing, amazing scenery, amazing places to visit. Again, back to the, the pilgrimage tour side of it, they are, you know, there's um, fantastic monastic sites on the, on the island, like the Seven Churches, you know, it's just a fabulous place to visit. There is the famous Dun Angus, or Dun Angus, on, on um, which, if you're looking at the, at your screen here, there's uh, they're perched on the top of these 700, 700 foot cliffs. Dun Angus is a 4,000 year old fort, so it is just again fascinating to watch. And again, back to the people and the people you do meet you, that we introduce you to, Parkin Clancy, that uh, Kerry mentioned before, she lives on the Aran Islands, so she's a great scholar. She's fantastic meet and talk to uh, on the island. There is Father Dara Malloy lives out there. He's a Celtic priest. Uh, uh, Dirk Nikinaj lives there. She's great for music and dance. And So again, people and meeting people is just part of, part of it. Then we continue on back to the mainland again. We'll go to Professor Moher and the Burn. And the Burn again is, is a very wild, rocky place with a fabulous uh, flora and fauna there that is very unusual. And the cliffs the more themselves are just absolutely stunning, absolutely world class site to visit. We'll continue on down south of Ireland to a place called Dingle. Dingle Peninsula, as you can see from the photo here, is just absolutely stunning and it's just full of monastic sites, of beautiful places to visit. In the distance out in the Atlantic you will see uh, an island, Skellig Michael is called now Skellig is uh, as was um, there was monastic monks living out there years ago, and it's just, this would be hard to believe, but they were living in literally stone huts. And one of our first photographs on our um, our thing here was actually a picture from the, the Skellig, so it's just amazing. We move on then up to Glenstall Abbey, which is in Limerick, and Glenstall Abbey is, is a home of the um, Benedictine it's the Benedictine, it's the Benedictine monastery where there there's about forty monks living it in uh, living there at the moment. Again, it's a place you can go in, celebrate mass with the monks, meet some of the monks, and again we have the privilege to be able to do that and introduce you to the monks. So while we're all uh, all this time, of course, we would have a very very experienced, knowledgeable knowledgeable guide on board our bus, regardless of whether the monks are ten or twenty or thirty. We will have this. And they will be specialised. Uh, they're hand-picked. They're genuinely interested in the in this area, and they are just amazing to watch. That night, when you're in Limerick, Helen mentioned Bunratty Castle. This was a great castle to have a banquet and again have a bit of enjoyment as you go along the way. We would continue on towards Dublin, and we would meet. We would go to Solis Reed. Solis Reed is a community of nuns, a small Christian centre which is focused on Saint Bridget. Celtic spirituality, and again, we, you will meet Sister Mary, and she's passionate in what she does, and it's just amazingly interesting. So that's basically what we do for a tiny bit of what we do for the adult groups. Now, we also uh, have been for the last number of, a long number of years, at least 10 years, dealing with youth and study programs 
and especially from the United States. And one of the things we, one of the things is a journey to adulthood. Is this is um, youth participate in this program for about three years now. It's certainly going on in the United States. I'm not sure whether it goes on in, in Canada or not. But what they do is they study, they, they work up for three years to really come on this pilgrimage. Pilgrimage usually is out of the country and their parents are absolutely thrilled to have them come into Ireland because they know that they're going to be safe here. They have the language, we have the la same language. So it's, it's just a great experience. And it has just absolutely amazed us how fascinated these youth are and what it's but it opens up a whole other world for them. They experience Irish Christian heritage and culture. They interact with Irish youth, and this has to be seen to believe where you have a cluster of maybe 15 youth from from um, the United States, or as it happens, that's where they have come from so far, and they could be with another 15 youth from maybe the Aran Islands, and they're all exchanging you know, ideas and talk, and then they're introducing them to the Irish language, to music and games. The Irish language is very live and well in the west of Ireland. For, I, for instance, myself, I, I am a native Irish speaker, so language, Irish would be my first language, so it's quite alive, it's, a, it's our language here. And then they could go, they could um, maybe go to the north of Ireland and uh, participate in peace building, uh, not participate, but hear about the peace building and transformation of the north of Ireland. And again, a lot of the things to do is community work. It could be with the nuns in Kyle Moravi, they could be, they could, the nuns make things like soap and jams and things like that, and one of the days could be with them. So it is a fascinating and interesting thing for them to do. Now I'll see you back to Kerry again. I suppose we're a bit conscious of time now, but um um, you're always absolutely well taken back by the experience and the feedback that we get, get I suppose, in particular from the youth groups and um, the, the J2A uh, groups that come, come here on specifically to Ireland on pilgrimage. And, and because of that, we uh, just included two, two comments, uh, one from the leader, and it was, there are certain places different for everyone who's heaven where heaven and earth are just a little bit closer together. It is these places where one can find God more easily. While on pilgrimage, we visited the sites where the men and women of Ireland found their thin places, and we experienced God in a different way. And then one of the youth said, the uh, pilgrimage was a wonderful spiritual journey. The even song we attended in St. Patrick's Cathedral was an awesome way to connect to God. I felt really close to God because I was surrounded by so much history and faith. Our time spent at Sleon Cree was exceptional and a high point was our spiritual walk with Father Seamus. He taught us about Celtic spirituality in regard to nature and it was interesting to connect to God in a different way. Celtic spirituality focuses on finding God around you and seeing him in everything. He made what we see and it is only fitting to see him in it. Now we just were very impressed by the, the kids and, and what they thought about their experience there and felt their words could express more uh, what you can do here in Ireland. So I suppose our main points are that really Ireland is the, the island of saints and scholars and groups can come here and our themes are to walk in the footsteps of the different saints of Ireland and to experience our Christian heritage here and the different sacred place we have and we can provide the scholars that can interpret um, the experience for the groups while they are here. So we'd like to thank you all for taking the time to, to listen to us today and we'd be delighted to answer any questions that you might have. We do have a website and we're also on Facebook. Hi, thank Kerry you. and Kathleen, it's Helen here from Tours Marlin. Thank you both so much for a very detailed uh, presentation. There are a couple of questions. Um, if I could ask you just to answer them a little bit quickly just so we can keep a, an eye on our time and then if we have more questions at the end we can always um, put them to you. Um, one of the agents was asking about your typical roof size. That can be anything varies. Normally it, it could be, it depends. The youth groups often it can, might be only 10 to 15 kids. The adults can vary anything from 15 to 25. They rarely go over that. It's usually smaller kind of groups. But, you know, we will cater for them, but that's normally what we have, really. But what we say to people, we price it. You know, we say this is for 10 people, 15 people, 20 people, so you can judge. But we try to keep it very intimate and not too big. 
Perfect. Um, and Caroline, who's based out during, do you have any partners or resources to incorporate elements of genealogy or ancestry? I guess for Canadians, that's Queens. Do you have anything like that? Today, we, to be, we, would, we have never been asked for that as yet. So, I mean, it's an area we could do research into, but it's not, it's not anywhere where we have built up resources already. No. Okay. There is, there, there, is, there, there is no problem, and actually there is a, a person that I know very well, a friend of mine, and he's actually, uh, he has a company that, do, that you can um, do your DNA and see where you're from, so it's a much more um, scientific part mm. to do it, but uh, certainly we, it is no problem to do it here. Really, research you know, it's, it's, it's no yeah. problem. Okay, super. Um, okay, ladies, we're going to uh, uh, leave it there with the questions so we can um, bring on our next presenter, who's going to be Claire from Castletown House. So thank you both very much. Um, it's lovely to see you on the webcam. Um, and just a reminder that we will be sending all the details of Celtic Footstep to all the agents who've uh, registered today for the presentation. So you will be getting all their contact details. And again, we're recording the webinar so we can send it on. So thank you, ladies. Um, I'm going to introduce Claire Hickey, who is representing Castle Town House down in Selbridge in County Kildare. Um, so Claire, are you there? I am. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, Claire. Okay, I'm going to Hi. there with you if you'd like to take it away. So Yeah, that's great. Thanks very much, Helen. And uh, I'm going to say Kathleen and Carrie, that was absolutely fantastic. And uh, I'm actually delighted to see um, all the list of properties you included. As Castletown House, the property where I work, is actually a member of the Office of Public Works. It's a government um, a collection of properties that include sites like Newgrange, Skellig Michael, Clonmacnoise, and things like that. And Castletown just happens to be um, another. Um, so we're quite lucky. Um, the government look after over 95 heritage sites around Ireland. Uh, our website is heritageireland.ie, and you can kind of just refer to the website and see all of our properties dotted uh, throughout the countryside. So we look after Neolithic monuments, 12th century castles, botanical gardens, 18th century houses. So basically, you know, a lot of uh, reasons why people come here really to talk about Castle Town today. Uh, Castletown is based in Selbridge, County Kildare, which is literally the Dublin-Kildare border. So quite a lot of our visitors to Castletown, it's a museum, and quite a lot of our visitors, if they're, you know, whether they're independent visitors or group tours, they perhaps either fly into Dublin and then travel, you know, um, to the west or to the south of the country and can, you know, pass by Castletown on their way, or else sometimes they get people who arrive into Shannon Airport and they make the, their way around Ireland and then come to Castletown on their way back to Dublin Airport. So, I mean, so we're quite lucky with our location. Um, it is only 20 kilometres from Dublin, and we have access, um, you know, free parking on site, and we've access just off the motorway, which is very handy for cars and for coaches, or else if, you know, people don't hire a car, if they're just over for like a weekend, or, you know, if they're in Ireland for like a week or two and just using public transport, um, the bus from Dublin City does come out to Selbridge, which is um, very handy as well. So you can see an image there of Castle Town. It's um, one of the first, and um, it really set the fashion trend for these great big 18th century, you know, Palladian style mansions. So it's an Italian style house. Um, the centre of the house there, the main block, that's where the museum rooms are. And it's accessible only with a guided tour. Um, to the left hand side, that wing over there, the west wing of the house, that's where we have the guided reception, um, you know, the loos, uh, the cafe, things like that. We also have exhibits happening over in, in that space. The opposite side of the house now is called the stable wing. So you can't see the stables from this side, but uh, when you're on the tour, you can see the stables towards the back of the house. That's recently been uh, restored, and that's now an events conference center. And we also have markets and craft fairs there as well throughout the year. Um, so Castle Town, there's this, an interior shot. Um, the estate basically has the house, uh, parklands, about uh, 200 acres of parklands. We have a beautiful cafe within the West Wing Courtyard and then the events conference centre as well. Uh, where those gentlemen are, uh, we took some photographs uh, last year and we have um, these two beautiful white Arab horses, but sadly uh, they don't belong to the estate. But it's nice to show you an image of, um, of the horses there in the main hall of the house. That's actually the room where groups are brought up and they're told the introduction to history of the estate there. So we can bring, you know, groups of, you know, 
10, 20, 50 up into that main hall. So if you have a full coach, bring them up into the main hall. We tell them, you know, it's usually um, we've got the chairs laid out so they can sit down, hear a bit of the history, and then we divide the groups up as we go around the house on their guided tour. So I just um, drew up a little map there, basically, of where we are. Um, so you just see, like, the, the main road up at the top, that's actually um, the motorway. So, as I said, 20 uh, kilometres from Dublin City, so it's very, very handy. And um, also, um, you know, the, as I said, the public bus arrives to the estate as well. Um, so there's the gentleman, again, just outside the house. And um, around the house, the house takes 45 minutes um, to an hour. Now, we can spend longer or we can do shorter. You know uh, the group requirements are. Um, as I said, it is only accessible with a guided tour. But uh, we find with our, you know, tour guides, you know, it, it's very popular, and um, you know, the, the house now is really becoming quite famous. Um, this is the uh, main hall once again from a different side. So no uh, sign of our horses uh, there at the moment. But you just see in the background there are beautiful. It's our cantilevered, our floating star staircase, and uh, basically the tourists get to use that stairs throughout the tour. When the house was bought, it was actually a really interesting social history to it. Um, the Connolly family, we talk all about the Connollys on the tour, um, they built the house in the 1720s. So it's the first of these great big houses. And in 1965, um, the house was actually sold by the family. And the Connolly family sold it with all the furniture, all the collections, all the decorative arts, sold at auction, bought, bought by two developers. And the property developers were going to knock it down. So unfortunately, they did knock down the original walled gardens to the estate. But after two years of building over 400 houses at the back of the grounds, um, they actually went bankrupt. So we sound quite cruel when we say it because we're, we're delighted it did happen because the house and the estate was then saved and it was bought by the Honourable Desmond Guinness. So the Guinness family, I'm sure when your uh, visitors come to Ireland, they'll you know, have to sample the local Guinness. And Arthur Guinness was actually born in the village of Selbridge, uh, where Castletown is based, which is quite interesting. But Desmond Guinness bought the house and he gave it away. And he gave it to a group called the Irish Georgian Society. And they opened the house to the public. They got involved in you know, restoring the house and making it you know, the 18th century grandeur you know, building it once was. It was a house built initially for political parties and for entertaining. And uh, today it's actually looked after by the government. So in 1994, it was given to the government. So as I mentioned earlier, it's now under the care of the Office of Public Works. Um, just the next slide now. Um, you just a very small sample of one of the rooms. It's uh, the print room at Castletown. It's a very famous room. And if you go to our website, www.castletown.ie, you actually have a virtual tour of the museum rooms there within Castletown. That room is one of the most famous rooms we have in the house. Basically, one of the ladies who we talk about on the tour, her name was Lady Louisa, she um, physically cut out all of those pictures that we have on the walls. She would have followed a plan, and then they were stuck eventually to the walls. And we think perhaps they may have used um, water with flour and arsenic. So arsenic being a poison is why they've actually survived. And basically, they've survived, you know, since the 18th century. Um, the room eventually became a billiard room by the gentlemen, but thankfully the prints have survived. It's also where we eventually get the idea of wallpaper from. Um, but it all started back, you know, in the 18th century, and it's the only room within an English and Irish house where all four walls remain completely intact. So when visitors are on their tour, we can point out some very famous portraits that are hanging in galleries all around the world. So it's very nice, and it's a very famous room. Um, so as I just mentioned a little earlier, um, sort of highlights of what the house, the tour uh, covers. So it covers the um, history of the Connolly family, uh, the Honourable Desmond Guinness with the Georgian Society. Um, Desmond Guinness and the Georgian Society, like we were very lucky, they actually began collecting some of the original furniture that was sold at auction in the 1960s. And Desmond Guinness, you know, having so many well connections, he actually got Mrs. Jackie Kennedy to visit Castletown, or Jackie Onassis at the time. And she came to Castletown, it was mentioned in so many newspapers around the world. A lot of people who had bought pieces, and some were even in Australia, they sent them back to the house, you know, free of charge, just donated them back to the house. So we actually have so many of the original contents as we go through. Um, the Castletown Foundation is still involved with the house. They're a charitable trust, and they look after the care, really, of the collection um, within the house, and then the government look after the maintenance of the building. And we're continuing work on the estate. The western of the house for the cafe is that opened in 2007. 
to the Stable Wing, the events conference centre, opened just last year. And we're actually restoring the pathways throughout the estate now, so you can go for your walks down throughout the estate and enjoy your walking by the River Liffey, see our little bathhouse, ice house, and the monuments there on the grounds as well. So this is a portrait of um, Castletown, um, of William Speaker Connolly, who built Castletown. Um, he was 60 years of age when the house was built, and he came from very humble origins. So people are very interested to hear how he made his money. I will talk about that on the tour, but basically he was from Ballyshannon, which is in County Donegal. And his parents were Catholic, but became Protestant, which is very important because they could send him now to Trinity College. And he went to Trinity College, he studied the law, got involved in politics, um, really involved in politics. He was elected to become the Speaker of the House of Commons. And he decided to build Castletown, which is the first of these beautiful 18th century you know, houses built in Ireland, really to show off to people what he had achieved. And uh, he and his wife Catherine, as they had no children, when they died it was inherited by their grandnephew Tom Connolly. And this is a portrait now of his wife, Catherine. Um, now, she's actually with their niece. We talk about um, their niece on the tour. We see some pieces of furniture that were intended to be a wedding present for her niece, but sadly, her niece there, she died when she was only um, 14 years of age. So it's quite nice to be able to talk about the family. We have so much information from written documents that survived. Um, their grandnephew, Thomas, who inherited, uh, he and his wife, Lady Louisa, also sadly didn't have any children, but the house did stay in the family until the 1960s. The chandeliers that we have now in this room, the Long Gallery, it's one of the final rooms people see on the tour. Um, it's up on, located on the first floor. It's three floors over basement now of the house, so it's quite a large building. Um, but that room there, that's where we can have concerts, dinners, banquets and such. Um, that room is also very famous because of our chandeliers. There's actually three chandeliers. You can only see two now in that image, but there's actually three. And they're 18th century Murano glass chandeliers. So Murano being an island just off Venice. Um, they were bought by Lady Louisa in the 18th century, and they were shipped to Castletown. Each piece was then put into a melted butter, and basically, um, when the butter hardened, it was quite safe to be transported, you know, in like a big, um, you know, box or something. That they would arrive to Castletown, thoroughly cleaned, assembled, you know, all you know, um, hung there in the house, lit by candles. Um, but sadly, Lady Louisa, she kept very good accounts. We see her accounts on the tour, but sadly, she never talked about how much she spent on the chandeliers. So we're never to know how much she spent, but they have been restored by a company from Murano. They were over about 18 months ago, and they've admitted that they don't even have something like that in Italy. So these are definitely unique. So these are three of the largest 18th century Italian Venetian glass chandeliers that survive in the world. So they're absolutely priceless. And, um, you know, the, the photo there really doesn't do them justice. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, the next slide now, just to show you, that's um, our state bedroom there at Castletown. Um, unfortunately, now that bed, it isn't the original. A very uh, generous family from Luca in Italy has donated the bed. But as you can see, we have a very fine collection of decorative arts you know, throughout the house. Um, as I mentioned, the house it wasn't a family home until 1965. Um, you know, so imagine the house you know, was going to be knocked down. So we're very fortunate that Desmond Guinness purchased it, and then he gave it away to the Georgian Society and then on to um, the government as well. Oh, I'm after getting my connections lost. Yeah, one second. Oh, okay, I'm thinking I'm back. Okay, okay, I hope everybody's there. I just had um, my connection was just lost there for a moment. Claire, we can, we can still hear you. Can you still hear me? I don't, okay, um, the little buttons, though, are gone from my slides. Just to move. Oh, I can move the slides for you if you want. Fix that, please. Okay, off you go. Brilliant, thanks, thanks, um, thanks, Helen. But um, you just see a picture there of some events that we have um, at Castletown. So that was the rare and special plans fair. So the house now, as it's looked after by the government, we actually have an awful lot. We're very fortunate to be able to host free events for the public. So that's just the rare and special plans fair. Um, that we uh, held at Castletown. And we have country markets and craft fairs, but they're located actually in the stable wing. Um, that's an image of when we had Romeo and Juliet on the front lawn. So we're very fortunate to have a really nice events program. Uh, we're currently updating the program at the moment, um, so it should be live on the, on the website, um, castletown.ie, in the next day or two. All the information should be up. Uh, for instance, you can just walk up the front steps of the house in through the brown doors into the main hall where we had the image of the horses earlier. And that's where we have our free music recitals on Sunday afternoons and things like that.
players and image of the um, two different shots of our country markets and the craft fairs. They're actually the images of our Christmas craft fair. So the craft fairs and the country markets, we have them throughout the season. So for this season, we're hosting them on the last Sunday of the month between May and October, and then we're going to have some events over Christmas as well. Um, so in the next slide, then, you'd see an image of um, some music at the, at the fair. So we have uh, an image on the left of a fellow um, playing the violin. He was playing actually tra traditional Irish music, which was great, on the fiddle. Um, and then on the photograph to the right, you'd see an image of the uh, country market sort of in place. And we actually have uh, the Dublin concert band there. So really lifting people's spirits. And it's free, which is uh, even better again. Uh, so we are very lucky. Um, the next image now, just some interior shots of the, the main hall there on the left. That's uh, fantastic. It's actually a string quartet. We can't see the, the fourth musician, I'm afraid, but um, beautiful. That's soprano there and uh, harp and violin. So all these music recitals throughout the year. And then the image on the right, that's located within the 18th century coach house. Uh, where we used to keep the coaches and the stables are on either side of um, the, the image there on the right. Um, that's a string quartet called Voltava, who are local students in um, one of the universities nearby. Um, there we have uh, now one of our ticketed events. So the Camerata uh, concert, Camerata Ireland, the Castan concerts, they uh, play around the world. I think they've just finished playing in Carnegie Hall there a few weeks ago. Um, they're actually Irish musicians. They're very lucky to have both Queen Elizabeth II and our president. Um, you know, Irish musicians throughout the country of Ireland, and basically with the two patrons, they have events, you know, throughout the British Isles. Um, they have concerts at Castletown during the year, generally August, September. They're finalising the programme at the moment, um, so you can just see the long gallery there where we can have these ticketed recitals. Um, the recitals at Castletown, it's a very nice evening. You can have pre-concert supper um, in the house and then attend the concert, but they are ticketed events, but tickets are usually... 15, 20 euro, maybe 40 euro max, but you know it's a very nice way to spend an evening at Castletown. Um, here you can just see a little map of the 18th century parkland walks. So to the top of the page you see the black outline of the house, and the paths then around the estate are currently being restored. So at the very bottom you can see the River Liffey flowing through and that flows into Dublin City. Um, the lower pond is currently being restored, so we're going to have the pond for next summer. Uh, well, hopefully, all going ahead. And um, the other pathways, the lines around the estate, they're all being uh, restored at the moment. So the winter wasn't too bad this year, so thankfully work continued during the winter, and um, we're delighted with that. The Courtyard Café at Castletown, just a really small little glimpse there of the Courtyard Café. The café is actually located within the original 18th century kitchens. They have two rooms that they can use. They've got one there, the interior shop that you know, all the public just attend. But then they have a room just off it. Uh, it's a small room, but they can between the two rooms they can have about 70 to 80 people. And basically the room and next door is called the housekeeper's room. Sometimes we have groups who just want to have tea, coffee, scone, and they can arrange to have that for you. And um, sometimes it's self-service. You know, they just go in. Perhaps they'll have, like, the coffee canisters. They can pour their own cups, so they can have as many cups of coffee as they like. And uh, we have the scones laid out in platters of sandwiches, or else we can organize to have sit-down um, waitered service as well. And then the image to the right is taken from the wine cellars of the Courtyard Cafe as well, the outdoor cafe. That's just an image of the stabling. So um, earlier on you saw a photograph of the string quartet. They were actually playing in that room there, the old coach house. So that's access, one of the access points into the new um, events conference centre. We can hold civil weddings at Castletown. Um, unfortunately, though, they have to take place within that stable wing. Um, so they can't take place in the main house. We have had the odd wedding, though, at Castletown where they've had a blessing in the church at the end of the avenue, the original church to the estate. And then they can walk up the avenue or drive up the avenue and then people have had a marquee out on the back lawn. So we can actually host, you know, very large events. And that's the image there, the stable and hunting room where we can have uh, meetings, conferences and silver weddings and things like that. Um, so you can just see our lords and ladies relaxing. That's where the gentlemen years ago, they'd um, leave their horses downstairs, they'd walk up the stairs to the hunting room, and they didn't have to worry about getting the main carpets in the house dirty, so the gentlemen could sit there with their mucky boots and such. And uh, once again, there's another beautiful image there of one of the ladies with um, the chandeliers glistening in the background. So that's um, really a, a lot you know, about Castletown House. Um, as I said, it's in Salbridge, County Kildare, just on the Dublin-Kildare border. Um, there's a, a little link to our website. And then the email address um, is castletown at OPW, so that's Office of Public Works, and that's our phone number. It's open for tours 
from mid-March until the end of October. Um, that's for the general public, Tuesday to Sunday. But we can offer tours um, throughout the year uh, with prior booking. Um, the entry fee to Castletown, it's you know, very reasonable. It's only €3.50 Euro per person. However, if you are interested, I would really recommend looking at the OPW Heritage card. Um, it's a card that's valid for one full year and it gets people into the list of properties that we look after. For instance, Dublin Castle, Kilkenny Castle, Newgrange, Skellig Michael, you know, Emo Court, we've you know, over 90 properties. Um, it's a very um, worthwhile card. It is only €21 Euro for an adult or €16 Euro for a senior citizen. Um, it's only €8 Euro for a child or a family ticket is €55. Euro. And as it's valid for one full year, it really is um, really good value. Um, so I just want to just wrap up now and let you move on to Geraldine. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for your time. Um, I hope you um, like what you saw there at Castle Town, and perhaps we might um, talk again in the future about coming to visit. Hi, Claire. Thank you so much. No, um, thank you, Helen. No, thanks very much. <laughs> beautiful. Um, and I think uh, you know a lot of the agents got a really clear understanding about the house and what it can offer. There's obviously a lot going on. It's somewhere you can spend a good you know half day or maybe yeah. a day and have a picnic and. It looks yeah. amazing. We just have yeah. a couple of questions, so oh, yeah. you can just answer them really quickly, just so we're tied on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, move on. Yeah. Um, so one of the agents was wondering, you know, is it possible to host private events? At, at oh yeah, house? definitely. Um, I know previously, um, you know, without <laughs> bringing in too many names, I know Lufthansa and um, the airline company. They've actually rented the house before okay. for corporate dining. And they actually laid out um, during the dinner, which was upstairs in the long gallery, um, during the course of the evening, uh, downstairs the main hall, um, the, an event company came in and put down a new floor, you know, for Irish dancers. Okay. So when people are coming down the main stairs, also they could just see these Irish dancers, you know, with the, the tap shoes, you know, the hard shoes kind of like dancing away. So they, they, they actually can, you know, um, you know, contact the house and, you know, check about availability. Um, especially having the new stable wing, that's a very, you know, a good location now because... Um, you know, there's way more things you're allowed to do. Because the house is an 18th century museum, sometimes there can be restrictions regarding lighting fires and candles and things, but like regarding the stable wing, you know, it's, it's much more comfortable of a room and things like that. But we definitely can, you know, um, rent out the house, you know, for events. And do you do weddings as well then? Well, the civil weddings, um, like the ceremony can take place in the stable wing. Um, so we, we have a few weddings now. That's just been approved um, uh, late last year. So we're delighted now we can have weddings. We have about five of them. And after the service, they have yeah. the photographs of the house when they're leaving because they're going to um, another hotel in the area that's very similar in style called Carton House. Uh -huh. And they're going to Carton House, and another group's going to the K Club um, for their wedding. So they're very close by. Um, mm -hmm. Two other couples are actually having, um, they're only having about 40 guests. So they're actually going over to the West Wing to the cafe. I know it doesn't sound very glamorous, the Courtyard Cafe, but the company there, the catering company, they, they have a fantastic menu and really good service. So they're actually having um, their evening reception. Uh, they're staying the whole day at Castle Time, basically. Okay, fantastic. There are a couple of more questions, but um, yeah. I'm going to quickly bring Geraldine on from... Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, um, okay. Thank you so much, Claire. For no, thanks very much, and I hope they liked it. I'm sure we might see them at Castle Town sometime. Very well. Absolutely. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Helen. Um, thank so you. So up next, we have Geraldine Murta from Elegant Ireland, last but certainly not least. So, Geraldine, we're just going to pop your presentation up, and we have your, your picture up there. Um, so if you can just... Let me know if you're there. Hello, Helen. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, super. Well, I will hand it over to you if you'd like to take it away. Thank you, Helen. And good morning to everybody on this call. Thank you so much for being here. And um, we appreciate the time that you're giving to these presentations. And I hope you enjoyed the previous two as much as I did. Um, I'm the... Um, as Helen said, the founder and owner of a tour operating company called Elegant Ireland. And um, we're also DMC, so we handle business and incentive programs in addition to our FIT and group vacations. Uh, essentially, we work with the high-end traveler who appreciates value and quality. Now, the overall title of today's three presentations is Heritage and Landscape. Landscape covers all the visible features of Ireland, both natural and man-made, and it's the fusion of people with place, and as so, it is fundamental to local and national identity. Essentially, it's the canvas on which the lives of the people have been recorded. 
and it's interwoven with and the key to the culture and heritage of Ireland and the Irish character. Through Elegant Ireland's customized itineraries and programs and with the cooperation of our outstanding guides, we're able to interpret the Irish landscape and heritage in a way that engages your clients and surpasses their expectations. So who are we? Certifications. We save you, the travel agent, time, we minimize your costs, and we encourage repeat business by providing your clients with a vacation that takes them behind the scenes, creates great memories, and enables them to have experiences that are not achievable on a DIY tour. Meantime, you can relax on the knowledge that both your clients and your reputation are in trustworthy hands. We act as a one-stop shop and we provide a range of services from castle rentals to itinerary and general trip planning, transport and the provision of outdoor pursuits and other activities. The itineraries and tours we design are not picked off the shelf or plucked from the brochures of others. They are customized to match the wish list of your clients and they offer opportunities to engage with Irish people and opportunities to visit private homes, glorious gardens, and private collections that are not available to the general public. A little bit about my background. When I founded Elegant Ireland in 1984, my vision really was to create a personalized blue chip service which would provide experiential vacations and once in a lifetime experiences for visitors to Ireland. And through my contacts and my passion for Irish culture and heritage, I was able and fortunate to turn that aspiration into a reality. For 28 years now, Elegant Ireland has been at the coal face of Irish travel, opening doors, pushing boundaries, and introducing new ideas and concepts. Prior to setting up Elegant Ireland, I created the first training course for tourist guides, and for many years I worked as a tourist guide. Indeed, it was that experience that led me to set up Elegant Ireland and offer alternatives to the standard tours which were on offer at that time. Now, essentially at Elegant Ireland, we have four divisions. And I'm going to be very brief because time is rather limited. Um, and I'm just going to talk about three of them. We have our special interest group tours, where the average size is around 20. And because we have access to so many private houses, some of which are magnificent castles and stately homes, our tours are best suited to small groups because we take your clients away from the well-trodden tourist track and behind the scenes into the homes of our leading citizens, aristocrats, poets, artists, politicians, scholars, and entrepreneurs. They get the inside view of Ireland. And of course, the fact that we know the owners personally means that the, your clients are treated as their personal guests. This private access sets us apart and is one of the keys to our success. We design bespoke tours for a huge range of interests and topics. Um, some of them are listed on the, um, on the uh, here in front of us. And um, some are not listed, such as um, genealogy, which of course is very big at the moment. And we also have um, what we call our holistic range of tours, where we combine the sightseeing with small workshops on a range of self-development topics. Um, these programs have the potential to be life-changing for people, and they cover a very wide range, such as dealing with stress, meditation, yoga, food for health, turning crisis into opportunity, etc. They are especially popular, we find, with, ex with uh, female executives and entrepreneurs who are interested in sharing time and ideas with like-minded people and in a safe and non-competitive um, setting, which provides ample time for touring, for learning, and for fun. We then have our FIT division, and uh, we, this includes, of course, all of the services such as reservations at the best hotels, castles and country houses, customized trip planning, private castle, country house, and villa rentals at unique and stunning uh, properties, tea times on the most prestigious um, golf links and courses, self-drive and chauffeur-drive cars. Whenever possible, we encourage our FIT clients to engage a driver guide because these people are absolutely wonderful at bringing the landscape to life. 
through their stories and through their individual and unique styles. They're trained career guides who know the country intimately. They have many years' experience accompanying visitors from all walks of life. And they are people who are full of blood And of course, it goes without saying that they are excellent drivers with totally clean driving records who put the safety of your clients first. All our FIT itineraries are a la carte. They include several options from which the client picks those that are most relevant. And based on the information provided by you, the travel agent, we incorporate the client's wish list into the menu of options. Knowing the interests and the passions of the clients before they arrive is really the key to providing a vacation that is experiential and unique. The third um, umbrella under which we operate is our castle and villa rentals. And if you're seeking the perfect property in Ireland for a family holiday, a reunion, a film shoot, corporate meeting or whatever, you need look no further. We have a wide range of properties, um, ranging from castles all the way down to um, beautifully, beautiful contemporary villas and even cottages that are very, very romantic. And of course, um, romantic people have chosen Ireland um, for their weddings and renewal of their vows. This is just one of the properties that can be rented through Elegant Ireland, and it's um, home to the Dukes of Devonshire. And as you see there, Adele Astaire, sister of Fred Astaire, was married to um, the younger brother of one of the former Dukes, and uh, she would have stayed at the castle, of course. Um, Kathleen Kennedy, sister of J.F. Kennedy, was married to the 11th Duke's brother. So they, not only are they beautiful to look at and full of the most interesting contents, furniture, portraits, and so on, they're also full of history. And with the right guide and the right people accompanying your clients, all of this can be brought to life. It's really quite a remarkable way to get an insight into Ireland and Irish people. Ballinatray in County Cork is a wonderful venue for weddings. Sandbrook in County Carlow, a great place for family reunions and get-togethers. Castle Coote House in County Roscommon is another stunning property right in the middle of the country. And then, of course, you have all these beautiful, stunning, uh, and very smart villas for people who like something that's more modern. As you can see, there's a, quite a range here, something really to suit everybody. Our client profile, um, our clients come from all walks of life and backgrounds. They include figures of state, industrialists, celebrities, even royalty. Um, and whatever their background, you can be quite sure that um, your clients can rely on our discretion, commitment, our local knowledge, and impeccable planning when it comes to putting together their itineraries. Uh, a lot of celebrities book um, these properties and stay in them. And here you have Ballinacurra in County Cork, which was one of the properties in which Michael Jackson stayed when he visited Ireland um, some years ago. Another a wedding at a private house. Look at those beautiful um, bedrooms. I mean, who would want to leave them? They're absolutely fabulous. Now, we also handle business meetings and incentives, and I'm not going to um, dwell on those because of the time restrictions, but if that is something that um, you are interested in, you can always get in touch with me. Why would you partner with Elegant Ireland? Well, because we respect and value our relationship with the travel agent and tour operator, and we will always act in a way that safeguards your reputation and your image. Your clients will receive the best possible care and service, and their enjoyment, privacy, safety, and security will be paramount. We believe in Elegant Ireland that every vacation has the potential to be a life-transforming and once-in-a-lifetime experience, and we plan each itinerary.
strengths combine the essential elements that lead to an authentic, interesting, enriching, experiential, and stress-free vacation. We have a 20, 20 year, 28 years experience in the hospitality business, and whether we're dealing with two clients, a group of 22 clients, or an incentive for 102 clients, we have the um, hospitality down to a fine art. How are we different? Well, we're very pernickety about every element of an elegant Ireland vacation, and we believe that great vacations are essentially about experience, about interaction, and the type of behind the scenes that we have developed. Um, it's not about sitting in a coach or sitting in a car and looking at a lot of hardware. It's about meeting the people, it's about going into their houses, it's about having lunch with an Irish family, it's about visiting an Irish farm, it's about learning to play the baron, going to a Cayley, planting a tree on a fam in a famous garden. It's about all these interactions that, that, that bring something to life and give it meaning. And of course, private access is an integral part of our luxury group tours, um, many of which have a very strong educational component. We would have worked with a lot of non-profit organizations, museums, and so on over the years. And uh, we've done that through their tour operators, through their travel agents. And the reason they come to us is because we can put together something that is completely unique to them, and we can give them experiences which they would not get where they're coming on their own or even if they were coming possibly through through another tour operator. Every itinerary is different, and there is nothing off the shelf about an elegant Ireland experience. So to contact us, you have all our details here. We'd love to hear from you, and we can promise you all a Kate Mila Forte. And more importantly, that's what we promise your clients. Thank you for listening. Hi, Geraldine. It's Helen from Tourism Ireland. Thank you very much. Sorry you um, you kind of speeded up there towards the end, but um, hopefully all the agents got a really good understanding of what your company offers in terms of um, the services and you know the the wealth of properties that you can um, you can uh, arrange for clients, which is fantastic. We do have a couple of questions from some of the agents. Caroline was wondering. When, um, when renting a romantic cottage, does Elegant Ireland also offer airport transport for the guests, or is that something they would have to arrange themselves? Thank you, Helen. Um, first of all, my apologies for speeding up, but I was conscious of the fact that this was supposed to finish at um, a specific time, so I do apologize if anyone had difficulty understanding. Please get in touch with me. I'd be very happy to continue the conversation. Um, yes, we can provide everything. And in fact, when people rent a house or a castle or a cottage through us, Helen, we um, also provide them with all the various touring suggestions and things they can do in the area. So it's not just a matter of booking the house. We can help them with local guides. We can get their tea times if they want to play golf. We can provide um, a full range of services, including transfers to and from the airport. Um, another question from Donna. She was wondering if you deal with Lissard House? Lissard House, Donna, is not on our website, but certainly if um, somebody wants us to book something that is not on the website, we will do so so long as we have seen the property. We don't book things that we haven't seen. And just to, to illustrate that, the waiting list that we have, the number of people who want to put their properties on our website, is actually longer or bigger than the number that we have that wow. on it. And that's because we only use what we consider would be the best properties in each category and in each area. Of course, it's a subjective choice, but um, we've been doing this for a long time, and we feel we know what our clients will like and enjoy. But certainly, if there's something you would like us to check out for you, and if, if, it's, you know, if we feel it's up to our standard, we'd be very happy to book it for you. That's great. Um, there's also another question from Donna. 
She was wondering, um, do you arrange holiday homes or cottages in County Down? Is Elegant Ireland, you know, a cross-border organisation, or is it is it just within the Republic? Oh no, we're an island. We we cover the entire island, including County Down, County Fermanagh. Um, Yes, a lot of our clients uh, go to, to Northern Ireland, and really we don't see any distinction when we're, we're, we're planning um, a, a tour or when we're booking cottages. And we do have some very pretty cottages in County Down, Donna. Fantastic. And they're, at, they're actually on the website. Questions? No, I think that, that's it for the moment from the agents. So, Geraldine, thank you very much for um, taking the time to come to us here. Um, fantastic company and some, some great services there, and I think you'll definitely be getting hopefully some, some emails or calls from the travel agents that we had on the, uh, the webinar today. So just to finish off, a big thank you to everybody who's taken the time, our Irish partners who came live from Ireland and also all the agents across Canada who have taken the time out of their work day. As I said, we'll be doing a follow-up email with uh, all the partners' contact addresses and also a link to the recording of the webinar. So if any of your colleagues missed the webinar today or if you think any of your colleagues would be interested in watching it, then you can, um, you can send it on. So that kind of finishes up our webinars for um, for the, the summer here. We are considering doing some more later in the fall, so do keep your eye out on the Travel Trade News. And a big thank you to Baxter Travel Media Services, Emily and the team here who've helped us pull everything together. So that's it for the moment. Um, thank you very much. Bye.